Hi viewers, good day. Welcome to vSparks. Today we are going to see the basic concepts of Kubernetes parts and we are going to see a demo on how to create parts in the Kubernetes cluster. If you like this video, please subscribe to vSparks channel and click the bell icon for the latest updates. This is the agenda of this video. We are going to discuss on these topics in this video. Let us first recap a gist about Docker containers. How are you running your applications as container in Docker? Whenever a user passes the Docker commands to run a container, Docker engine will pull the respective image to the local registry. The assumption here is you should have containerized your application and pushed it to the Docker registry earlier. Coming back to our discussion, from the local registry, Docker will create a container. So this container runs your application. In other words, this container is the instance of your application. The key takeaway from this slide is containers are the bare minimal object that runs your application in the Docker environment. In the same way, pods in Kubernetes are the bare minimal object that is going to run your application in the Kubernetes cluster. In other words, pods are the smallest deployable units of computing that you can create and manage in Kubernetes. These parts encapsulates the containers within it and it represents your application. Now we will discuss a bit more about parts. Parts always runs in a node. A node is nothing but a physical machine or a virtual machine. Each node is managed by the Kubernetes control plane. Each node must run at least a container runtime and a kubelet. Most of the times, the container runtime would be Docker. A single node can run multiple pods. Also, a single pod can contain multiple containers, just like this. Though there are multiple containers within a pod, these multiple containers share the same storage and network. Pods content are always co-located and co-scheduled. What are the benefits of using multi-container pods and why we need to use it? We will see that now. Basically, pod level containers are classified into three types based on their functionalities. They are application containers, init containers, and ephemeral containers. The container that is running your application is called as application container. For example, a web application hosted by a container. Next is the init containers. Init containers, also called as helper containers, are the special type of containers that helps your application containers to do its duties. Init containers, which coexist with your application container, always starts before your application container. Init containers usually contain set of scripts or utilities that are not part of your application container. Let us get clarified this with an example. In this example, you are running an audit application which does your source code audit and compliance. This application is encapsulated in a pod. Who is going to provide the source code to the audit container whenever it starts? It is the helper container that pulls the source code from a Git repository and hand over the same to the audit container whenever it starts. This is a simple use case. Like this, there are many use cases. Next 
is the ephemeral containers. It is a special type of container that runs temporarily in a pod to allow easy user integrations like troubleshooting an existing container within the same pod. Assume that if this Nginx pod didn't start up, how will you debug the Nginx container? With the help of the ephemeral container, in this case, the debug container, you can check or inspect the logs of the crashed container. Both this init container and the ephemeral containers should not be used as like your application containers. Now, how will you create a pod? There are basically two ways to do this. First method is to create pods with the help of kubectl commands. Simple commands are given here to create a pod. Second method is to create pods using YAML definition files. These YAML definition files is also called as manifest files. We will discuss these YAML files in the next slide a bit more detail. There are basically four fields you need to define for building a pod using a YAML file. They are the API version, kind, metadata, and spec. For the parts, the API version is v1. You can very well check the same for the other Kubernetes objects in the Kubernetes API reference documentation, which is given in the video description. Kind is going to be pod in this case. The metadata field holds the identification of a particular resource. Example, the name of a resource, labels, etc. etc. Spec field contains the declaration of the container skeleton itself. For instance, the container name, its images, the ports it is opened for, and so on. Is there any ways that I can generate these YAML files dynamically instead of typing line by line? Yes, of course, you can do it using kubectl commands. This is a regular kubectl run command, but with additional flags. When this flag dry run equals client is used in the CLI, it won't create the resource actually. Instead, it will validate the commands presented to it as if like a real run. This is just like a trial run. This dash o yaml flag indicates the CLI to generate the equivalent manifest file of the passed in kubectl command. We are then redirecting it to a file. Now, this pod.yml file contains the necessary YAML definitions to create a pod. Now, we will see a demo on how to create pods with the help of kubectl commands as well as with the help of YAML definition files or manifest files. Step number one prerequisites or assumptions. We assume that our Kubernetes cluster is up and running and we are able to access the cluster via the command line. If you don't know how to create a Kubernetes cluster, please visit the previous videos. Just to save your time, I just consolidated all the kubectl commands in a notepad. This is my master node where I have connected to the Kubernetes cluster using the command line. This cluster info command gives the details of your cluster. Here you can see I am able to access the Kubernetes cluster. Now step number two, inspect the Kubernetes cluster. Just check if all the control plane components are running in the cube system namespace. Yes, you can see all the components like code DNS, API server, controller manager, cube proxy, scheduler, it's all running. Now check the nodes. Here 
here you can see our cluster is running with one master and two worker nodes. Also, check the labels of the worker nodes. Labels are just an identification to a resource in a cluster. These are the default labels in the master nodes as well as in the worker nodes. Now, step number three, create a pod using kubectl commands. Executing the kubectl command, just check if there are pods running already. You can see there are no pods running in the default namespace. With this kubectl command, I'm going to run a pod named blue pod with the image nginx, which is going to get scheduled in worker node one with the help of node selector field. Now you can see the blue pod is created. So this blue pod is scheduled in worker node one. Step number four, create a pod definition or manifest YAML file. As discussed earlier, when you execute this command with the dry run flag, it will not create the resource. Rather, it validates the commands and arguments. As usual, just check what are all the pods that is running already. So it should be only the blue part that is running already. So now I have executed the command. After the execution, you can see no resource is created, but a YAML file with the pod definition is created. If I apply this pod definition file, it will create a pod named green pod. And this pod will get scheduled in worker node 2. Step number five, apply the YAML definition file to create a pod. After applying, a new pod named green pod will be created in worker node two. Now you can see the green pod is created and scheduled in worker node 2. Well, that's it for this lecture. This is the summary that we have discussed so far in this video. Thank you from vSparks and thank you for watching this video.